Hi folks, so while we're investigating a live system, uh, you might come across a process that you want to investigate further or that you want to stop in its tracks. Uh, so we're going to look at how you go about doing that. So if you have a process that you want to terminate, then you can use the kill command to do so. Uh, and basically you can send the kill signal, which is minus nine, um, to the process or processes that you want to kill. Um, or you can kill via um, like a username, all the processes that are run by a specific user, or uh, by a program name if you do kill all, use the kill all command. And then you might want to add firewall rules and things like that so that you don't get people just, the attacker just reconnecting. So, um, uh, let's have a look. So, the, um, alright, so if we have a look at the, um, if we were looking at processes and we found one that we didn't like the look of because we um, suspected that an attacker was using it to access our systems, say for example, uh, this SSH connection, um, then we can kill the process off by using the PID. So if we look at the um, process ID and you send the, the kill command. So the kill command actually has a number of different um, commands that it can send and um, the sig different signals and even though it's called kill, the actual kill command is just one of those. So if we want to kill, um, we can do kill minus nine and then, or minus sig kill, and kill off a specific process. Uh, which one did I say that was? Uh, so this one. And basically list the process IDs that we want to kill off. When we run that, actually the process that we're killing is the one that we have to SSH into this actual server, so it's going to kick us off. So as soon as we run that, it actually, we lost our connection because we killed the process because we've just booted the attacker off our system, for example. Uh, in this case, we can just SSH right back in. Um, so the other thing you can do is pause a running process. So if you have a process that's like currently running, um, then what you can do is um, actually uh, okay, let's we can run that in the background. So we've got a command that's currently running in the background, um, and if we look, we can see that command is currently running. And it's running away and it's you know doing whatever malicious things it's doing. In this case, it's not doing much. Um, but we can um, pause the um, uh, the uh, process by telling it to stop. So we can do, uh, and and now um, we will be able to basically uh, while that process is still running, it's not actually active anymore. Um, so. So, you, um, so we can see here, if we list the jobs that are attached to this um, terminal at the moment, that's actually been stopped, but it is still currently, uh, like all of the, it's still in memory, still any files that it had opened are still like, or it still has holding those files open, uh, but it's not actively doing anything. So that can be quite good to do, in, to investigate a bit further.
so the proc file system is a sudo file system uh, is a, so the Linux kernel provides a sudo file system and has information about the operating system in there and all the running processes and so for every directory uh, for every process there is a directory based on its PID and that you can access things like environment variables network connections the command that was used to start the program the access the namespace of that program so if it was ch rooted for example you could see what that program has access to what its namespace is there's a link to the actual binary file itself um, and so when you look in there you'll you know you'll see that um, there is a link to the to the, the actual binary used to execute it even if that binary has since been deleted you can access the, de the a deleted program for example that's still running through that sim link um, so let's have a quick look at that <clears throat> so if we have a look in proc um, there's a bunch of stuff in there including stuff about the actual system itself so you know if you look at Um, you know, it tells us information about the, the actual system that we're running. Uh, in this case, this is a VM. But the, um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, but importantly, there's one for each process. So if we looked at the, the process, what was the, so if, what was the process ID? It was 2131. So, so within that directory, there's there's a number of um, things that tells tells you information about that specific process, and this so this this looks like we're accessing a, a file on a directory, but actually, it's not a real directory or real files. It's provided in real time by the Linux kernel. So it's so it's a, which is why it's called a sudo file sudo file system. It's not a real file system. It's a like a virtual one. So we can look at things like um, um, we can look at things like current working directory of the command we can look at oh. um, so that you know there's a there's a bunch of information there um, there is oh, so that's looking at it from the right so if we do if we look at uh, Let's look at that directory in a bit more detail. So you can see here the current working directory is actually a, a um, sim link to where it was actually run from. So when I started looking at stuff in that directory, it's actually looking at my actual home directory on that server. Um, so uh, you know, so there's a lot of information there that you uh, that can be helpful and interesting. Um, I think I'll leave it there though. The 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 one I um, mentioned though in particular um, shows you the actual command that was used to run the process, and in this case, it gives you a sim link to where it is on disk. But if we deleted it from disk, uh, it would still give us the um, a sim link to um, like we can experiment with that so let's uh, try and remove like move the uh, bin cut to it's not usually a good idea to start moving system binaries around but um, now if we look at that information um, <clears throat> it's still updated and it's still pointing to the right place and if we actually removed it 
Um, which will we do that? Yeah, all right. Uh, if we let's first we'll make a copy to make life a little bit easier. If we then actually remove that program entirely and then look at the proc file system, it um, is deleted. Um, but if we actually look at that um, file, it still will um, make sure there's a copy of it available for us to access, even though it has been deleted from disk. So it, um, it's quite good like that. So if you've got a, some malware that like deletes itself um, as it starts running, for example, you can get still get a um, access to a copy of the binary file. Okay. Um, I think I'll leave it there. Hopefully that helps you to understand um, some of the things you can do to investigate a running process.